Juan, shall we start? Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. It's a, it's a pleasure for us uh, to be again at Consensus. Um, Amelia, can you share your screen so we can see the presentation? Uh, for those of you who have participated in the presentation that we did yesterday, uh, we said that today we were going to get into a deeper understanding of the RSK infrastructure framework or RIF, uh, which is uh, basically the building blocks to a fully decentralized internet. Um, many of you might know the RSK project, uh, Rustock IOV, and, and now this, the RSK infrastructure framework is an extension of that vision. So maybe we can go to the next slide and, and review a little bit how the architecture of uh, RIF is built. So uh, many years ago, when we started uh, working closely with the Latin American um, Bitcoin community, uh, we understood that Bitcoin was the basis uh, store of value of the financial system of the future. And that in order to serve those billions of users around the world uh, that really need a new financial system that is more inclusive and more open, we needed to add smart contract functionality. And that's why we created the RSK uh, framework. Uh, now, five years later, and reaching more than 50% of total Bitcoin hashing power merge mining RSK, uh, enabled us to question again, uh, what other parts of the internet were still fully concentrated uh, and subject to censorship um, or exclusion? And this is why we decided to expand the vision of uh, the IOV team with RSK and develop the RSK infrastructure framework. So today we're gonna be talking and, and you're gonna hear it directly from the team that is leading uh, these different services about Reef directory, Reef payments, storage, and the Reef marketplace. And this is extremely important if you think that half of the people in, the, in this planet cannot access a financial system uh, because the amount of transactions and the size of those transactions are so small that are basically unprofitable for the traditional financial system. And this is why Ale will talk about nano payments on, on Lumino and Reef payments. Uh, we are also living in a world that, especially after the current pandemic that we're living, we've seen surveillance and control and abuse on the information about the users. So Milton today will be sharing uh, the vision of Reef directory and Reef identity and how we put the user in the center. Um, also, the storage is another area of the internet that is fully concentrated and sub uh, subject to censorship. And um, we're gonna hear from the Reef storage team with Voitech uh, how we are planning to solve that, bringing the benefit and the security of Bitcoin infrastructure behind it. And then finally, we will hear uh, from Huli how the RIP marketplace integrates all these services and, and opens the future for decentralized sharing economies. So this is kind of what we're gonna cover today. We're gonna have a Q&A session at the end, and then there's gonna be a fire chat session for those who want to keep on asking more deeper questions. Uh, so having said that, now we're gonna pass into a short video that summarizes what RIP is about, and then we're gonna go to the rest of the presentation. Go ahead with the video, thanks. So apparently we do not have the video. Uh, can we confirm that? So maybe you, we can move on in the presentation, Ali. If you want, you can start covering uh, with payments and we can see the video at the end of the presentation if that makes sense. Of course, thank you Gabi. Hi ahead. guys, thank you all for showing. I'm very excited to be here. It's an honor mm -hmm. to present here in Consensus. Um, uh, my name is Alejandro. I'm the leading of the, the services that call payments, with payments and RIF tool. 
And I want to start to share something that a product that we, we, it was released last week. It's called Reef Dollar. It, Reef Dollar is the first stable coin with Reef as a collateral. Okay, was made in collaboration with a Latin American startup that is called Money Chain, who also created the first stable coin uh, with Bitcoin as a collateral on top of our scale. And this is the first token created on top of the Reef token economy. And we are working on more, more tokens like this. We are working, for example, with Taringa, which is the uh, one of the biggest Spanish a social network that exists right now with more than 10 million users. And they're creating their token to support their internal economy and using Reef as a, as a backup, as a, a, a user Reef as the bucket of, of, the, of, of their, their, their economy. And we are planning to, to integrate more tokens, always focusing in emergency and in, in emerging economies with users, with unbanked users that need to integrate with uh, uh, digital economies. Okay, and there are a lot of different use cases we're working on top of this, this, this new token, this new stablecoin, which are amazing, like e-commerce, payments, payroll, and much, much more. There are a lot of different use cases that can be implemented on top of this, so we are very excited with this. This is, I'm making the announcement, but this is part of a, a, a work of many people. Like, for example, I want to say a special thank you to Maximiliano del Ocho and Santiago de la Vallas, which, are, which without them, this, this project will not, never see the light. And this is live right now in mainnet. So you can go to reef.moneyonchain.com and get your, your tokens and start working with them and, and, and take the, the, the advantages of this. So please, next slide, Amelia. Okay, let's talk a little about Reef Payments. As Gabi, Gabi said, in Reef, we are creating the building blocks to create a DeFi ecosystem, to create a new financial system. A new financial system that is fully decentralized and more fair between all the participants. We found that our actual technology could not support that financial system. That's why we need to create the building blocks. And Reef Payment is one of them. There are some some characteristics or some features that we, are, we, we need in order to support this DeFi ecosystem. Like for example, we need to have lower fees. We need, it has no sense, for example, if we want to support microtransactions and we want to allow to buy items of a few cents and ask them to pay one dollar of fees, that it will, it will left out a lot of different use cases. The same thing happened with the confirmation tank, for example. If we had to wait minutes in order to have a confirmation of a payment to be sure that cannot be reverted, it will left out a lot of different use cases. So we are working on that too. So Reef Payments try to tackle that, also the amount of transactions per second that we'll talk later, but also tackle the necessity to be an after layer that can interact with different payment networks, not only for our scale, but for all the, the, the blockchains in the ecosystem. We think that the blockchain has to start to interoperate, interoperate between each other in order to create this DeFi ecosystem. So Reef Payment as a cornerstone has the, the, the necessity or the, or the, or the main uh, requirement of integrate all the different payment options that are in the ecosystem. And of course, we see Reef as a suite. We are a suite, we are not different island. Iceland, so Reef Payments is fully integrated with the rest of the services that you will see today. Okay, so next slide, please, Emilia. So Reef Lumino is the first implementation of Reef Payment. It's our first off-chain payment solution on top of our scale. So right now with Lumino, you can create off-chain payment channels in any token deployed on top of our scale. And there are uh, some, some characteristics I want to mention about Lumino. The first one is the number of transactions per second. If we want to support this new financial system, we require a very big number of transactions per second. We think that Bitcoin support around eight, and RSK support around 100 transactions per second. That's great, but it's not enough to support a fully financial system or a fully DeFi ecosystem. In case of Lumino, with Lumino on top of Firescape, 
we support thousands of transactions per second. Also, the fees. We already mentioned the importance of this, and with Lumino, we have near zero fees in, to make the payments. The confirmation of time, as I mentioned before, is very, very important. And with Lumino, we take care into that. And right now, we have confirmations that are almost in near real time. You can send a payment and receive a confirmation in milliseconds. Okay? Also, the, the last year we released an invoicing system, which is an ability to, to, for a user to ask for a payment to another one and also send a, a, a receipt when he received the payment that is fully compatible with the Lightning Network. We also we always have in mind to be very, very compatible with all the Bitcoin products and communities, and it was not an exception. We took the, the day standard the, that we think is great, it's amazing, so we are we, we create our invoicing system that is fully compatible with, with their invoicing system. And the first version of, of Lumino on mainnet was released last year, actually here in consensus. So for us, it's, this, this incident is very, very, very important and we are very excited. And also the light light that I will talk in the next, in the next slide. So please, uh, Amelia, if you can move the slide. Okay. The Lumino Light Client. Today we are announcing the release of the Lumino Light Client SDK. So right now any developer can download the SDK and start to integrate their DAOs. It's, it's amazing. It's something that we were looking for it for a, for a very long time. It's before the Light Client, in order to integrate with, with, the, with the Lumino network, you had to run a full node. And right now you can, with, with with any, any client like mobile applications, like DAP, et cetera, to connect to the Lumino network without losing any security. And besides other solutions in, the, in, the, in other payment networks that their light clients are very limited in the number of functionality, functionalities, our light clients, if almost all the functionality you have in a full node, you have it in the light client. So we are very excited with that, we are very proud and we challenge you guys to try it and, and, and let us know uh, how, how do you feel with that. Uh, of course, uh, the security is one of our top priorities, but we are also making a lot of focus in usability and user experience for the integrations we are making. We are making integration with some wallets that will be released soon, but never losing uh, the, the, the focus or the priority in security. We are, don't want to lose the security of, of, our, of our products. So Amelia, please, next slide. So what, which are the next steps? Uh, there is a very, very, very big uh, roadmap that we have in Lumino that will take me hours to share. I just want to share two things. Uh, the, roadmap is black, the roadmap is public, so you can check it in the web. I want to, 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 to share the cross network payments, which is something that I'm very fascinated about. It's, we are working the specification to integrate with the Lightning Network. The idea is any Bitcoiner in the Lightning Network will be able to make payment in any token in Lumino without leaving the Lightning Network, paying with their own Bitcoins and vice versa. And I think that is something amazing that we're trying to do. And we would like to do it first in Lightning Network, but we will try to extend it for another network later. And the other one thing that I want to mention is the integrations. We are working with Taringa, which is the social network I mentioned before, to create a tipping system in order to incentivize the creation of content in their own platform. And we are creating a module for that, and it's, it's really great. We are also working with some companies in the eSport area to create, to allow them to create economies inside their games. Also with the video streaming uh, companies in order to make pay as you see videos using tokens and much, much more. And something very important is that right now in Lumino, you can use the Rift dollar. So this is kind of unique right now in the space. And not only the Rift dollar, you also can use the money on chain, the, 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 the dollar on chain token. We have two stable coins in Lumino that you can use. And this is very amazing. So next slide, please, Amelia, and I finish. So if you want to know more, you can go to developer portal in RSK. You have all the information there. Please read it. Please try to use it. Please challenge us to, to support you. If you have any question, if you need some help, we are here to help. Thank you very much for, for, for being here. Very excited. I left the meet to Milton, who will talk about Rift D2.
directory. Thank you again, guys, for, for watching. Good. Thank you, Ale. Uh, well, I am Milton Berman. It's really an honor to be talking here at Consensus right now. I will be talking about Rift directory, where I work as a product owner. This is the identity and reputation layer within the Rift ecosystem. Our vision is for it to be a driver to change the current digital identity paradigm. We want to move from identity 2.0 to identity 3.0 using self-sovereign identity models and a human-centric concept. As you can see in this slide, typically, when we interact with digital services such as social networks, sharing economy services, mobile operating systems or banks, etc., we cannot control much of what happens with our information. The service providers have full control as we agree when accepting their terms and conditions. We can say we lost our privacy. And we cannot even port our reputation to other services, nor prevent our info to be accessed by third parties without our consent. So when we talk about identity 3.0, we talk about this human-centric model I mentioned where we are in the middle, we control our data and how we use it when interacting with companies, peers, banks, and governments. We are talking about recovering our privacy, or at least do better in this field for future generations. And this is really amazing for us, like to be part of this process to change an old paradigm and to move forward to a, towards a new one. And our vision is to empower the people to build a human-centric identity and reputation layer, to enable privacy by default, and a global identity that is cross-border and cross-platform. Also, improving the UX user experience for crypto onboarding to enable mass adoption of these technologies. This is the architecture of Brief Identity products. At the top, we have the Reef login the entrance gate for, our uh, for us to manage our identity. It will allow us to interact with three main components. The Reef Data Vault, that is the safe where all your data, reputation, and verifiable credentials will be stored. And it will only be accessible by you and will enable portability from service to service. And it will be based on Reef storage that Wojtek will talk about later. The other one is RNS, the Reef Name Service. This service is currently live and you can use it and play with it and, and start assigning human readable domains to your blockchain addresses, accounts, and much more. And finally, the other uh, module is the Reef Keys. This product will enable the possibility to manage multiple accounts and devices from, from your main Reef login account. And it will be based on the ERC 1056 standard that is running over RSK blockchain and which allows free identity creation and decentralized management of it. We know self-sovereign uh, identity technology is not something easy to develop and it's not an easy concept to understand. We know that. So Rift Directory is here to simplify that for the developers. We don't want to reinvent the wheel and we will be taking advantage of existing great tools in the ecosystem and partner with them to build on top of them and offer a simple unified library for the developers community. We are having talks with uh, Uport, IDEN3 and other teams, but there are many other interesting projects that we, we would also like to explore. We develop Reef Identity for it to be useful for different needs. It will enable identity management for the Reef for government, governments and Reef for enterprise uh, suits and the same for DeFi and video games. Nowadays, we are working together with Taringa Social Network to develop a Reef login single sign-on MVP. As mentioned by Ale before, Taringa has millions of active users, so it's really exciting for us to launch our first version with their platform. This is a concept we are designing together with Taringa's team. Developers will have a simple library to add to their apps and websites and add a sign -in login pop-up such as this. The beauty of the single sign-on concept is that the users will be able to use it in different platforms with exactly the same user experience. 
and for developers, it will simplify the onboarding of their users. Then the user could choose his crypto wallet of preference to create an account with our service. The Riff app, MetaMask, Nifty, or even a hardware wallet. Afterwards, the developer will have the chance to ask the user what type of info she wants to share. So this is the roadmap. The first step will be to develop the first version of the Riff login I was mentioning. And it will be launched for Taringa platform. But right after that, we will release a white label open source library for any developer to implement it. Afterwards, the next step will be the Rift Data Vault release with the Gibraltar government as our first important use case. And then we will, uh, we will release an improved version of Rift Keys where we want to uh, enable social recovery style tools to improve the crypto onboarding user experiences. So if you want more information about Reef, you can go to our Reef directory website. And also you can start trying the RNS manager and the JS library. You can use it in these links you can see, then they will share the links in the, in the chat box. And I will now introduce you to a self-sovereign identity use case in which Reef joined uh, to Bitcoin Argentina NGO and IDB Lab and other partners. I will talk a little about this use case where unbanked, uh, it has to do with unbanked populations. Uh, this type of population living in slums all around the world have to struggle with what is known as poverty penalties. Because of information asymmetry, they have to pay more for products and services because they don't have formal credit records with traditional institutions. The Didi project is working in Barrio Mujica, that is one of the biggest slums in Argentina where 40,000 people live nowadays. Didi is developing a mobile decentralized identity app and platform to tackle these issues I had mentioned. This is a non-for-profit uh, non project in which Reef is one of the main partners and donors, such as the other ones you can see in this slide. Really, this is a really beautiful use case that help us to realize that the technologies such as the ones we're building in Reef, decentralization technologies, have the chance to make a real difference in the world. This is creating a verifiable ID and reputation platform with no barriers to enter. It will enable informal daily interactions to be fully verifiable and reusable and won't need any intermediary to do it the people will be empowered with this type of project. They will be able to build their own credit and reputation history as they never did be before, without the need to be banked. This is really important. And we hope this will result in reducing the poverty penalty issue mentioned before. And yes, it's important and really exciting for us and the DD team really. About the technology, uh, that uses it, it follows the decentralized identifiers and verifiable credential standards. So it has full compatibility with Rift directory. This is about to, Didi is about to finish the MVP development, but the go live of the app in the neighborhood won't be as easy as expected because to the complicated situation related to COVID-19. But because of this complex situation is that we know this project is more important than before. Also, I have to mention that the project is looking for funding. So if somebody, if you're interested in becoming a partner, you can contact us. And just to finish, I really thank the Reef directory and Didi's team for the great effort we are doing to build a more fair and more inclusive digital tools for the people. So now let me pass the torch uh, to Julian, who will introduce you to the, the Reef marketplace. Thanks, Milton. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Julian Rodriguez. I am the product owner of Reef Marketplace. And we're very excited, very, very excited to be presenting for the first time the Reef Marketplace. This is a product that is very important to us. And we've been working on this uh, very hard for the past few months. Um, we call it the heart of the Reef economy. And there's a reason as you can see. The Reef Marketplace is the service through which 
all the other products connect with their users. So it is, uh, we think in it as a one-stop shop where service providers of uh, RIF services can meet with their consumers and users and everything is governed through smart contracts and in a centralized manner. Some of the services that we are including are related to all the services that were mentioned before by Ale, like for payment services where uh, we're going to incorporate watchtowers, which is a component that monitors uh, payment channels. For brief directory, we're allowing the buying and selling on RNS domains and the exchange of any, any basically collectible token. For storage, that is the next talk, uh, we're also uh, providing the centralized storage services. And the same happens with all the other services that you can see here. So moving to the next slide. What are the benefits of this decentralized marketplace that we are building comparing to other marketplaces? And there's a, a blog post that we just released two days ago. So I encourage you to go to, to the blog for more information. But basically with decentralization, there's a set of benefits that come today compared to traditional marketplaces. One of them, of course, is the efficiency as being peer to peer and allowing parties to connect directly you remove intermediaries, so making it more, more less, less expensive and more efficient. There's also a benefit in openness. So anyone can join in this decentralized marketplace for anywhere in the world. There are no barriers, uh, restrictions in terms of territory or regulations. In terms of security, it's much more secure as all the rules of the marketplace are written in smart contracts and known by all parties and they're enforced by code. There's no room for uh, corruption or arbitration in, in the decisions that are being made. It's more transparent for the same reason. The, the rules are known by everybody. It's censorship resistant. This means that nobody, uh, an example that it usually happens with centralized marketplaces is that uh, they can decide who can join and based on certain terms and conditions, they can either enable or disable certain accounts. Uh, that doesn't happen here. It's open, anyone can join and participate. Immutability is another great benefit because of the, the, the code being already recorded and shared by everybody. There are no, there's no room for arbitrary fees or changes in terms and conditions that can, uh, that, that take hostage, uh, take the user hostage of that. And also like Milton said, uh, cell phone reputation. So in these marketplaces, you can, if you want to decide to leave the application and move to another application, you can take your reputation with you and you are the owner of your own data and not the, the marketplace itself. So let's move to the next slide. So how is the roadmap looking for marketplace? So today we are doing the presentation of our first MVP, which is the functionality to buy and sell RNS domains. And we will have a demo now in the next slide. But the, the next step is to, to include storage services, which will come out very soon. We are, we are finishing the development. Uh, this will allow storage providers to uh, persist content for users. Uh, and then the, the next step will probably be including other services. Oracles might be the, the next one. But the idea is that at some point we'll, we'll start including the staking, slashing, reputation, SLAs, and dispute resolution mechanisms, which is crucial for, for, to ensure that all parties behave uh, as expected. So going back to MVP one, let's uh, do the next slide. And we have the video, the Reef Marketplace demo. Uh, and I will, I will show you a bit how the marketplace looks, how it works for buying and selling domains. And this is uh, an application that will be live on the testnet very, very shortly in a few days. Uh, so let's go over that uh, video. Okay, let's see. I see you, Juli, but not the video. Yeah, no, me neither. Yes, we're having some technical issues with the videos. Yeah, this is the correct video. Uh, yes, just... the video is in the context. Marketplace it's video. Already, it's already starting. Okay. 
What does it mean? Click Huli. We, we, it's already playing. So where? Now it's buying an RNS domain. These are the two options uh, that are going to be integrated into the marketplace initially. It's how to exactly. buy an RNS domain, and then we're going to see how to pin storage information. Select the price range. On the center, you have the different options of names that are available in different prices. And you just click in the right um, which one you want to buy. You can select by price as was being shown. You have the name, the seller, the date that the domain is renewed because you buy just for a certain period okay. of time. I can see it now, Gaku. <laughs> okay, you go ahead. Take over. You're the expert. Oh, yeah. Basically, this is a. <laughs> Sorry for that. This is a, uh, the screen where you basically are buying a domain. So here we are checking the owner. But basically, the idea is that uh, this is already working against uh, our testnet. So uh, you can see the domains which are listed. All that is information is on the blockchain, and any user can connect. And if it's the owner or, or has the, the exact amount of RIF tokens to buy a domain, now it's confirming the, the approval to connect to the application. So any user can basically submit a transaction to, to buy this domain, if they have the corresponding amount. And the smart contract guarantees that uh, acts as an escrow. So when, once the payment is received, it automatically transfers the, uh, the domain to the buyer, no intermediaries in between. Uh, so now we can see that here, I already bought the domain and I can see that I will have it, when I click on the sell option, I will have it in my, in my domains. Uh, and here we will do a final verification to check who's the owner of the domain. This is more of a technical thing, but in order to validate that it's been, it's been properly transferred to the blockchain. So that was the example of buying a domain. Now uh, we'll move to the, to selling a domain, which is uh, as well, very simple. So once you, Connect again, you're in the landing site and this landing site will be available in the link in the next slide. So once you connect to the landing site, you click on name services, you will see again, the domains which are available. And here I'm doing some validations to, to confirm that I own uh, a domain, which is App Store, yeah. And then here I will click on sell and I will select Dabster from my, my domains and list it for a certain price. So it's very intuitive. Uh, we put a lot of focus on the user experience and uh, it really looks like a traditional, any traditional marketplace. The only interaction, this wallet that pops up is the actual control that the user has over the, the whole transaction. So when once you confirm on your wallet, the domain has been listed and now you will see that it's available for anyone to buy in the marketplace. So that's basically the, the process. Um, what, is, what is interesting okay. and, and worth mentioning, Juli, is that uh, this marketplace that is being tested for the RIF services and will uh, all the services will interact with, then can also be available for any other use. You know, it's going to be offered as a service and we can envision uh, all kind of use cases for decentralized marketplaces because what you've just seen is uh, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction between two users just using the, the, the marketplace interface but then everything that is going on underneath is a, it's a smart contract and, and the exchanges are being done peer-to-peer. -peer. Exactly. And that same example we showed with RNS domain can be implemented with any, any collectible or non-fungible token. Uh, that, that can be exchanged on the blockchain. And just uh, uh, to continue with what, what Gaku said, our long-term vision, which we call marketplace as a service, 
even though we our first uh, deliverables and our first goal is to provide reef services through the reef marketplace and allow providers and consumers to meet there uh, our idea basically is that the reef marketplace serves as a foundation or cornerstone to build much many uh, much more decentralized marketplaces so anyone can the idea is that anyone can take the code and build on top of it and you can have with, with, with little effort a decentralized Amazon, and maybe a decentralized tour, maybe a decentralized Airbnb, and any kind of marketplace that we see today in the traditional world could be implemented using this technology. And that, that is why what, what, what we would like to see because that's where our, our vision of a more inclusive and fair and transparent uh, world uh, will start to, to, to be more tangible. Um, so moving to the next slide, just where you can get more information. As I mentioned, the, the marketplace in the testnet is deployed on marketplace.testnet.reforest.org. You can get there. It's an informational site, but in the next few days, we'll be releasing this functionality that, that we showed today. And hopefully soon we'll be moving to the main network. And pay attention because we'll do announcements very, very soon uh, regarding the marketplace. So follow us on Twitter and visit our blog. Uh, there's more material coming on the marketplace. And um, thank you very much. I will now transfer the torch to Wojtek, who will talk about reef storage. Thank you very much, Juli. Uh, how convenient uh, a word transfer. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wojtek, and I'm leading the team working on reef storage. The Rift Storage is infrastructure project uh, which aims to revolutionize uh, the way we store our data. We want to give users a choice of uh, taking control over their own data uh, by deciding where they are, uh, where they are stored and uh, how, can, uh, how they can access them. On the other side of the spectrum, uh, we also want to enable anyone to upload and consume public content. So the requirements for the service are very clear. It has to be censorship resistant so that you can always access your data no matter where you are. It has to be permissionless uh, to make sure anyone can consume the content. Anonymous, uh, so you can not be identified uh, when you consume or upload your content. Fault tolerant, uh, which ensures that your data are always available even if parts of the network is down. Self-sustaining, uh, so there is a motivation uh, for both uh, you as a consumer and the providers to, to uh, maintain this service operational. We realize that the problem is not lack of solutions, uh, but lack of integrations and difficulty of adding decentralized storage to your products. And therefore uh, the need of you as a developer to make a choice for your users on when their data is stored. And that is why we created an open protocol, uh, which seamlessly integrates with already existing decentralized solutions. Last year, we started a partnership with Swarm. And since then, uh, we've together built the first incentives mechanisms called Swap. And we are continuing our uh, joint efforts to bring much more. We've also added support for IPFS uh, and we have uh, much more in store. These are the two already available storage solutions uh, that can be consumed through our protocol and JavaScript library and your product uh, and make your product even better. Uh, so we wanted to make sure our protocol is easy to use as possible. Uh, so we decided the best way uh, to do that is building our own product on top of the storage. There are a number of use cases where decentralized storage can add significant value. And one that stood out is the content creation industry. Currently, it faces three main issues. Uh, how to sustain the operations of uh, studios, uh, the problem of fake news, and censorship uh, or deplatforming. Uh, having close ties with uh, Latin America and the problem it faces, we decided to focus on the last problem and that's censorship, which has become even more relevant uh, lately with the uh, virus situation. We have created a new product called Rift Publish. So let's have a look at how it works. Uh, if you can please 
play the video now? We need the coin desk, the con consensus team to play the video. Okay, one second, sorry guys. Riff Publish is a tool that makes it very easy to upload text-based content like blog or newspaper articles and consume it in decentralized fashion. Our goal was to seamlessly integrate into any workflow you might already have. So as a content creator, all you need to do is open the soon available Riff Publish website, drag and drop your content and click upload. This works best for static websites or PDFs. Here you can see me uploading our first article about Riff Publish. If you are using WordPress, we make it even simpler. Just install the Riff Publish WordPress plugin, and now each time you want to publish an article, you can choose to also upload it to decentralized storage. For example, we can see how Coindesk could make their latest Bitcoin halving article truly decentralized. In both cases, behind the scenes, the system uploads the content to IPFS and gives you a new URL, which you can share, or just click this convenient tweet button. On the WordPress plugin, this information can also be found underneath each of your articles. Our main focus though has been on how is such content consumed. The process has to be incredibly simple and work out of the box. That is why reading an article shared through Riff Publish is as easy as clicking on a link. It opens in the browser and after a short while shows the article. In this way, the piece gets to you through centralized gateway. However, if you wish to be anonymous or you cannot access the gateway, all you need to do is install a browser extension. Here, I have an IPFS companion install. So my browser, instead of using a centralized gateway, directly uses the IPFS. Nobody can stop you now and prevent you from reading about blockchain, decentralization, or any other, in some areas, blocked topics. OK, thank you, Wojtek. So uh, we are currently working uh, with a number of influencers and newspapers uh, to make sure Republish uh, meets their needs. And, um, and uh, we have a few features that we want to finish before opening it uh, to the general public. Uh, like the integration of RNS uh, so that the articles can have memorable names or improving the management of your stories. On the Swarm side, we are excited to continue our close collaboration. Uh, soon we will bring you a feature which makes it possible for you to guarantee content uh, which you care about will always be downloadable, even uh, if normally uh, this content would be removed from the network. We are even more excited to continue our contribution to the Swarm project and work as one unified team to bring uh, you new and better versions of Swarm. Lastly, uh, we are ensuring the storage service seamlessly integrates into the Rift framework and fulfills all its needs. So starting with the marketplace where we soon allow everyone to provide uh, their unused storage to the community and get rewarded for this service. So now when you have a laptop that uh, uh, where you have some space uh, that can be used in the network, you can just offer this to the community. We are also making sure uh, to use all the amazing stuff uh, that was presented by my colleagues, uh, like the Riff on Chain, and also to make sure we support the other services like SSO or RNS, uh, which will need uh, the Riff storage to work. So stay tuned for more updates on riffos.org slash storage. And now I give the word back to Gabriel, who will tell us one more thing, and maybe even finally 
uh, showed the video about Riff. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Wojtek. Um, so to, to finish our presentation today, um, I just wanted to share these that came up as a result of all the different interactions that we've had with, with the government uh, and central banks over the last seven years. You know, we, we played uh, an important role in explaining Bitcoin technology uh, for the last seven years uh, across Latin America and also internationally in Europe and Asia. And in, you know, after so many years in conversations and talking to these central banks and, and governments, now they came back to us say, uh, okay, we would like to uh, test blockchain technology. We would like to serve our uh, citizens as well with the benefits of decentralization or uh, low cost uh, or transparency, like different governments and different entities or enterprises see the benefit from this technology. And we realized that IOV as an organization with both the RSK and the RIF platforms, uh, we were kind of in a unique position to offer a full uh, enterprise solution for hybrid public or private blockchain solutions where you can apply all the technology from the self-sovereign identity or decentralized uh, identity credentials, decentralized storage, uh, encrypted communications, uh, the gateways, the oracles and the escrows, uh, the micropayments, and of course the, the, the marketplace solution, I mean, could also be ported on an on enterprise uh, version. Uh, and given that our commitment is with the 3 billion people that are currently excluded in the system, and all the technology that we build is meant to serve them as, as uh, good as we can, uh, as fast as we can at the, the lowest possible cost. Uh, we understood uh, that it was important that all these enterprises and governments also feel part of the blockchain revolution and can compete to those two kids in a garage that are trying to uh, create the next decentralized Google or Amazon. So uh, this is, also something new that we wanted to share with the whole audience. Uh, there's a whole team now fully focused, led by, by David Peses, um, that is offering the whole suite of RSK infrastructure framework, plus uh, the public RSK blockchain or a private implementation, uh, whatever they need. And over time, they can change. Everything is fully compatible, and that uh, creates quite a, a unique uh, suite and an opportunity for, for these governments to start uh, getting involved with blockchain technology, see the benefits, and then uh, hopefully move, move on um, on the technology and the complexity. Uh, so we are very excited also to offer this to on, on different formats uh, to governments and enterprises as well. Um, so before we finish, uh, and I think it's, it's great as a summary of everything that we've said, um we're gonna see the video these are the links i mean we've shown them several times through the presentation reefos.org for all information regarding the the reef suite and for developers we combined everything about the rsk uh, infrastructure framework and the rsk platform on that website developers.rsk.co uh so we can go to the video now to the introduction video to see if it works um there we go. The financial system has left billions excluded or underserved, and the internet has not been able to protect users' privacy. The world needs a change, and there is hope. Bitcoin created the basis for a decentralized financial system to empower individuals, and RSK made it fully programmable, enabling a peer-to-peer -peer internet. Imagine if we could rebuild an internet fully decentralized as it should have been in the first place. 
Imagine a world where all citizens can transfer value instantly and almost for free. Imagine a world where users control their digital identities. Imagine a world where you can store and own data. Imagine a world where you can communicate freely and with total privacy. Imagine a social network where you are fully in control of your identity and data. Imagine a world where open access platforms enable individuals around the globe to exchange information, value, and services with full control and transparency. Imagine a fully decentralized internet. Welcome to RSK Infrastructure Framework. Welcome to RIF, built on top of RSK and Bitcoin. Awesome. So um, that, that's kind of a summary of uh, that we used on the RSK platform to uh, create the DeFi for Bitcoin ecosystem that now has more than 50% total Bitcoin hashing power. Uh, and, and we are now using that security uh, in order to promote uh, the remaining building blocks of a fully decentralized internet. Um, we have, uh, I think, 10 more minutes now. And I have a few questions now that we've received from the audience. Uh, so the first one is for Ale. Um, they are asking us how, how a developer, how someone can build on top of reef pavements. Um, well, the, the first thing I, I suggest is go to the developer network if they have a, a DAP or, or a mobile application that is built on React Native or something like that. There is a, a tutorial on how to integrate the like, client to the, to the network. The first thing you have to do, you have to have an account in, in RSK. You have to have some tokens to play with it. If you need, we can, we can help you to do it in testnet. We can send you some tokens of we have for testing and we can play with it. But there is a good tutorial of how to integrate very easy your application to the Lumino network. Uh, and Ale, I, I have another question for you. Uh, yes. What use cases uh, would you like the community to build on top of uh, Lumino? You know, which are the use cases that, that you're most excited about? Oh, anything that adds a collaborate economies or something like that. I mean, something that uh, solves real problems, like for example, uh, uh, the, 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 thing that, the things that I mentioned before, for example, the video streaming, something that in order to pay as you see, or uh, all those kind of things that in, in normal, in, in blockchain cannot be done because of the cost of, or the timing of confirmation, etc. So those use cases are, out of the, the, the question because it's require more money to, 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 to make the transactions than the money that the, the users will receive or the, or the application will receive. So in those cases, I think is, there are good, good use cases, but anything that collaborative uh, economies is something that I, I really like. So I don't know. Nice. But, but yes. I know, I know you, you know more, more use cases. Than no, I, I mean, there's so, so <laughs> many, so many options. Uh, there is one that is quite simple, but, but it's uh, very, very interesting, which is the, the tipping solution that uh, we are yeah. developing for Taringa. So basically that will enable 12 million active users to start tipping each other uh, based on the content they upload. Uh, I mean, this could even be implemented in Zoom, right? So you could be tipping, uh, your, I mean, different yoga exactly. teachers or cooking instructions, and you can participate in different activities. And if you like what you're being taught, you can start tipping uh, with stable coins. Uh, yeah, we are creating a, a module for tipping, as I said, but we are, we are focusing right now on Taringa, but we are really in a way that can be reused for any developer too, in order if they want to accept tippings in their, in their platform, in the social network or in e-commerce or, Whatever they will be able to do it very easy. Nice, um, uh, and I have a, a question for for Wojtek. So, how could uh, a, a newspaper or or a journalist benefit from publish? Because I don't know if if that was clear to the audience 
uh, I mean, what kind of users would, would benefit from, from using Publish? Thanks, Gabby. Uh, so in, in the first iteration, uh, we mostly focused on those that have been affected by censorship or by deplatforming, meaning that their content has been removed from other platforms because it wasn't profitable or aligned with the commercial needs of the platform. But uh, even this first step already helps uh, solving the additional problems that we identified. So uh, even by uploading your content to decentralized storage, you can uh, now you now have a, un a unique hash that I forever identifies your content. So this can be used on some second layer solution to uh, measure and fight the fake news. Uh, it also opens door uh, for, uh, for uh, tipping uh, thing, uh, with integration uh, with uh, Rift Dollar or, or uh, Rift Payments. Uh, it could be very easy to uh, tip to people, to to the you know content creators, and that's the next steps where we actually want to go with the solution. Okay. Yeah. Right. I lost my connection for a second. Can you guys hear me now? Um, I have another <laughs> question here for. For, for Juli. So Juli, you mentioned that now in the first MVP, it's uh, the possibility of buying and selling domains. Uh, then we're gonna see integrated the pinning service. So you can buy decentralized storage um, initially from IPFS and then for Swarm. What's coming next in, in, the, in the brief marketplace? What, what other uh, treats or surprises you have for us in, in the near future? Yeah, uh, storage definitely is gonna be gonna be the next one, and then after that, uh, we're working. We started already working on integrating oracles. We oracles for those that don't know are like um, basically when, when you're working in a blockchain, it's not easy to access information that is outside the blockchain. So oracles are sort of smart contracts, but they're more than that. They're like, like tools or technologies that allows us to get information from the external world into the blockchain. And that's a service that will that will be probably it's one of the most demanded uh, and the, one of the most used in the whole DeFi ecosystem. Runs on oracles that, for example, get the exchange rates uh, from different uh, between Bitcoin and the US dollar, between Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Um, so definitely, oracles is something that is going coming pretty soon. Being able to provide oracle services. Uh, uh, to, to developers or teams that are building decentralized applications. And uh, regarding payments, also probably something regarding watchtowers, which I mentioned briefly, but this, these are sort of, uh, again, services that monitor the payment channels to ensure that everybody is connected and, and transactions flow smoothly. Uh, so that, that's another one that may come. And also nice. meta transactions, but I think we have... You know, yeah, for, for those a lot, a lot who, is coming on. For those who don't who don't know, uh, meta transactions is when you subsidize. Uh, you know, when you send a token, you need also to pay the gas. So with the meta transaction solution, you can pay a third party to to register that transaction in the blockchain. So you pay everything with the token, and the user doesn't have to deal with with gas. Um, Wojtek, we have a question here in the audience that says, "How can they plug their publish?" solution on their WordPress. Right. Uh, so I already answered in the chat, but uh, very quickly, the Rift Publish plugin will soon be av uh, available directly through the WordPress uh, plugin store. We, of course, uh, will release the code uh, as an open source, so you can also use the GitHub directly uh, and just very easily install it into the WordPress as you would with any other WordPress plugin. OK, thank you. Um, we are running out of time. Uh, I have one more question, but I, I will say it here, but we will answer it on the fire chat that uh, we're going now. Um, and it's related to the, to the Didi project. Uh, this is one of my favorite projects in Latin America. It's uh, fully focused on helping and banks people to create their own identity. 
So they have informal financial system that creates no reputation for them. And, and what the DD team has done is amazing. They created a way for them to collect uh, this financial reputation that over time they can use to get you know, more formalized microloans. Uh, <clears throat> and all of that is, is going to be embedded into the brief identity solution. So we can replicate it in other parts of the world and we'll also be using brief storage. So Milton, I would like you to tell us more about the, the de details of the project, uh, but given that we are running out of time, we invite everyone now to join our fire chat. I think in, in, in the chat room is the, is the link and we will see you there to, to continue the conversation. Thank you very much to the whole Reef team for presenting this. Uh, I hope the audience is as excited as we are about all this technology coming to the Bitcoin ecosystem on top of our escape.